lighting up scoreboards all season. East Carolina and Marshall are the highest scoring offenses in Conference USA football. Huge point totals on a near weekly basis. But today, it's all about the W. East Carolina and Marshall go head to head. The conference season ends for the loser, while the winner advances to the Conference USA title game next week. Who will outscore the other? We'll find out moments from now. And here comes the thundering herd of Marshall. Their senior day, 15 seniors on this Marshall team as they take on their rivals from Greenville, North Carolina, the Pirates of East Carolina. This one for all the marbles, the Conference USA East Division title on the line today. To never lock on to one receiver. Shane Carden, the quarterback for East Carolina. Lisa Byington, third member of our broadcast team, standing by with the head coach of the Pirates. And Doc Holliday's got his guys huddled up and set to go. As we inch closer to our opening kickoff, that's brought to you by Bud Light. Here we go. Beautiful day in Huntington, West Virginia. Temps in the low 40s. And sunny skies. So we give you great access on the field. Curry will tee it up from the 35-yard line for the herd. 15th all-time meeting between these two teams. A championship on the line for these two clubs. Great turnout here in Huntington. Long time since the Herds played a game this point of the season that has meant this much. Inside of the five-yard line, Lance Ray's got the football, and he gets out across the 20, pushes his way close to the 25-yard line. Third down here in the first minute of the game. On the ground, Cooper to the left side. He's not going to get it. Marshall's defense, they stack him up. Marshall. Keeping the number 75 on those helmets. They played at Tulsa a couple of weeks ago on the anniversary of the plane crash in 1970. And the players went to Doc Holliday and said, Coach, we want to leave them on to honor the 75 folks that were tragically killed in that crash in a game that was in Greenville, North Carolina, against East Carolina. So Cato handing off. A lot of room as Talaferro breaks free up near midfield. And a first down for the Herd as they pick up 21 on first down. Well, one thing about it, they're inside zone. You see it here early. Does a good job of, of really coming off the block of number 76, Garrett Scott. Looks the same at the end of the day, combated. Keep it on the ground again. This Marshall team is going to Talaferro and another big chunk of real estate for Talaferro as he takes it deeper into East Carolina territory, a gain of 28. Well, again, they're doing a very good job of trapping Krishan Rose up front. And then you get a missed tackle in the secondary by Chip Thompson. Be a 42-yard attempt for Justin Haig. Redshirt junior out of Delray Beach, Florida. And Justin Haig does the job. He comes on, and he gives Marshall the first points in this game that has the East Division title on the line. Because I think they have to establish balance in this game. Cooper's their guy. Senior out of Georgia. Pirates getting it for the second time in the game, and they get dropped. They get dropped on an 18-yard return. Devon Johnson was involved in the tackle for the Herd. Also helping out was Neville Hewitt. So the Pirates able to maintain possession here, unlike on their first possession in the game. And a ball knocked down. It'll bring up a second down. Second again for the Coming inside, and then again, you see, I believe that was your man again, James Rouse. Only two others in East Carolina history have done that, the back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Second and seven. He's got the rock again, but he is greeted as they step up in the gap and do a terrific job. McKelvey, one of those in there, he's a fantastic young player for the Herd as well. Well, if you look at him right here, he's going to be the guy that makes it happen. Look at his ability to key and diagnose right here. Comes up. He's not affected by the block of number 25, Breon Allen. 
Doc Holliday said of Tommy Schuler, he said he's got the best hands of anyone he's ever coached. And Holiday has been at Florida and West Virginia and all over the place. Here's Cato, slings one over the middle, man wide open and right on cue. It's that young man we talked about, Tommy Schuler, a gain of 27. And he's the kind of player that lives for these types of big games. And, and that's what you want to see from your big game players. Simply a dig across the middle of the field, off the play action, linebackers get caught up. There's the hole in between the linebacker and the safety. Coordinator raved about him. He said he tries to be a champion in everything he does. Cato fires far side near the first down. The herd's going to get it. As the catch is made over there by Wilkins, he picks up 19 as Marshall moves the sticks again. Back on live, Talaferro, nice job to knife his way through. Man, is he off to a great start. He'll pick up eight on the carry as Zeke Bigger was there. Had the fumble in the second overtime that was heartbreaking to watch. Cato escapes, now fires, got Schuler wide open inside the 20. Tommy Schuler is gonna get tackled inside of the five yard line. As Woolard dragged him down, big play for the herd. You see Shula working the slot right here, and, and you wouldn't expect that Woolard would get caught up with him, but it's actually on the other side coming over to help out Chip Thompson. Looked like a coverage bust to me. Nobody carried him up the scene. Today's red zone brought to you by Verizon on the ground, powering towards the goal line. It's a touchdown. Marshall, Devon Johnson takes it in, and the herd two possessions, and they've scored on both. They lead 9-0 with the point after coming up. That's what I call an unforced error. A lot of people upset over there at a play that could have been prevented. Schuler came in, Marshall's leader with 80 catches. He set a school record a year ago with well over 100. Ray has dropped. Marshall's kick coverage team has been terrific in this game so far here today. East Carolina will get its third opportunity on offense, trailing 10 0 in this winner take all Conference USA matchup. Is that guy, Shane Carden, looking to get her going? Got all day to throw it. Fires and tipped away as he was. So, victory there for East Carolina's defense. Third possession, they get a stop. High hanging punt here and drifting under it not much on the return great coverage outstanding coverage once again by Marshall they have been great in the kickoff and the punt coverage and Corey we mentioned it at the outset of the broadcast last two meetings two years ago here in Huntington that was the catch of the year <laughs> as this game in 2011 came down to a single overtime and it was a Marshall win. Then last year, this is Blake Fronapple because, as you said earlier, Rakeem Cade only played two and a half quarters. That was an overtime to Bodenheimer. And then here's Talaferro. And unfortunate for Marshall as we come on live. The ball is tipped, and Marshall's got it. So that's how the last two have ended. And coming up with a football huge play by Gary Thompson for the herd. Sometimes a little bit of a low release point. Thompson seeing he wouldn't get there, timing it up, and then having the hand-eye coordination, not only time it up, but also make the play. Cato, hands off, Talaferro. You know he wants to redeem himself for the game last year. He was suspended eight games. The entire team had to say yes to bring him back, and they did. That's how much he means. East Carolina, they need him right now. Cato trying to find the end zone, got time, hops around. Now he's going to take it, he's going to fake it, try to reach for the pylon, and Rakeem Cato gets in for the touchdown. And the herd on a four-yard run from Rakeem Cato lead this game 16-0. We talked about just the moxie and the combative nature of him. It just says a lot about him overall as a football player. They're taking a look, we're being told, to check where those feet were. And if he did what you just said, 
Well, based on that look, I couldn't see where his foot. Because he goes against him, obviously, in practice every day. Here's Ventavious Cooper. Can't get away. Stepping up again. Tyndall came in. A loss of three. Well, today he might be playing one of the best players, period. <laughs> he, along with James Roush, getting it done early in this big game atmosphere. The ability, the ability to key and diagnose, gets around and beats the block. Number 57, Adam Alsawi. Excellent play by Tyndale. There's Corey, third and 13 now for Carden. Far sideline, Roberts over there. And he was looking for his go-to guy again, Justin Hardy, but they can't get the completion, so it's a fourth and 13. They'll punt it. The career list, Corey, for Rakeem Cato. He continues to climb. Next throw, he could be passed. Michael Payton for third all-time. With Pennington and Leftwich in front of him, he throws. A dart delivered. The catch is made. They're going to be about a half yard shy of the first. And Talaferro have gotten the opportunities to carry it. Cato slings one over the middle, caught first down inside of East Carolina territory. And it's Tommy Schuler, a gain of 17. The field. And then Cato's gotten into a rhythm throwing in between the hash marks early in this game. Updated numbers, good work by the folks in the trunk. He's now third all time is Cato. Big chunk of real estate here, another first down. He reads the linebacker's eyes and the corner's body language. He has learned to recognize some of the subtleties on the blitz. Good stuff, Lisa. Very well said as Butler carries again. Broke a tackle, spins away. Magazoo dragged him down, but not before a gain of 14. Marshall continues to thunder down the field. Magazoo going for the strip, but a pretty good job by Grove coming in, but he won't go down, will he? <laughs> Tremendous block as he gets up to the second level, and you're not able to fall back. That puts your safety, Magazoo, in a difficult situation. A pretty good job by him getting third down. They need nine. Five minutes gone in the second quarter. Cato fires, caught Schuler inside of the five. Goes Tommy Schuler. Michael Dobson was there to get him. Well, he's going to get again inside of a. This time it's number 39 that he really wraps around in coverage. And so the herd knocking on the door once again. Cato going to fire to the end zone. Wide open touchdown, Marshall. Into his tight end's hands, Gator Hoskins. A three yard play, his 13th touchdown of the year. And you'll see the fake, and then he's able to release late. And there's nobody there because they bit up on excellent run action by their offensive line. And that was probably one of his easier touchdowns. 26 receiving touchdowns. That is first among Marshall tight ends all time. Special player. This game is all Marshall to this point. Lance Ray bringing it out to the 15. Forced back into the middle. Does a good job to get free. But the herd continue to be special on special teams. They're Well, trick play here from East Carolina, and this could be a nightmare as they lose the ball, but they fall on it before it goes out of bounds. And it was Daquan Barnes, the last that had it. He took it on the toss from Breon Allen. Tough to run these types of plays against a defense that pursues well. And you'll see <laughs> number 90, Arnold Blackman, he's the one who kind of calls it. And then out of nowhere, Monterius Lovett comes up showing no love. This defense is a defense that's predicated on speed. Marshall has them right where they want him. Carden over the middle, off the hands of the intended target, and McKelvey came through and lowered the boom on Isaiah Jones as this Marshall defense is bringing the heat. <laughs> Tigner punting from his own end zone. He'll step out to about the two and try to get the best kick away he can. It'll be fielded at the 42 by Devon Smith. This kid's dangerous. Devon Smith's got room. Devon Smith still going. He's going to take it back for the Marshall touchdown. Devon Smith, 58-yard return for the score. 
Well, they're setting up some type of wall return. It looks like they're setting up to his right, but he sees daylight or his left, and he sees daylight to his right and decides to go the other way. And really, we can't see the hole right there, but I don't think it mattered if anybody held. They matching up Chip Thompson, who did a good job against Eric Gibron in North Carolina. Marshall on the ground. Talaferro, he is running tough today. He gets it out. Tight end receiving touchdowns. You see where he stands among the Marshall greats. Good job by Talaferro. He broke a tackle, breaks another one. Still on his feet, taken down at the 24-yard line. A 26-yard run and a first down for the Herd. Gotta wonder what's going through the mind of Ruffy McNeil saying Talaferro looked bigger than 183. Looks 253. And he's breaking a number of tackles. They almost knocked each other off on the last one. He's running behind his pads and with good forward lean. And when you do that, you can get yards after contact. Jones, the motion man. Carden looked near side, now throws back. Good job to get his hands on that by Hardy, but he goes nowhere as McKelvey stayed home and made a terrific play there to take him down. Just sitting there for about five minutes answering questions. They didn't treat anything on his upper or lower body, but something to watch maybe here throughout the afternoon here, guys. Yeah, we will, Lisa. He's certainly a valuable part of their team. And East Carolina trying to get a touchdown. Chip it down to a 10-point deficit. They're not going to do it here. Great play on the defensive front by Brandon Sparrow. Loss of three. And even though he's 305 pounds, he can slip blocks. And then he'll finish when he slips that block. Five of 11 is East Carolina, third down. Pass is caught. They're going to be short on this one by a bunch. Marshall will get the rock to begin the third quarter in this matchup of two teams that are 6-1 and one in Conference USA. The winner will win the East Division. The East is simple. The winner of this game gets it. The West, a lot to be sorted out. Great return here by the herd. DeAndre Reeves breaking free. Still on his feet out to the 40. Trying to get by Lance Ray. And he'll be dropped in the neighborhood of the 47-yard line. So a terrific return of 42 yards by DeAndre Reeves. This is a battle in the first half that they lost. The special teams battle. If it were not for that holding call, this could likely have been another excellent return. They've had some other pretty good returns as well. Yeah, they have. And what a break that was. It is a break. Good catch by our crew in the truck. Appreciate their efforts here on a holiday weekend as we're here in Huntington, West Virginia. Corey Chavis, Lisa Byington, Ben Holden, all of our crew. Is, that's a 14-yard pitch and catch to Mumu. Devon Smith. Tommy Schuler for Marshall. Over 100 yards receiving. He's going to add to it here. Makes the catch inside of the 30 to the 28, an eight-yard gain, and he's got the first down, Corey. And this is just an option, Rob. You'll see it right here. He comes inside, and he's going to work away from the linebacker. And really in no situation. Marshall quickly to it, wide open. Coverage busted there as Devon Smith makes the catch. He picks up 14. Started. 20 of his last 24 coming in on the ground, barreling his way in for the two-yard touchdown for Marshall. Devin Johnson finds the end zone for the second time in this football game, and the Herd have a 20-point lead. Devin Johnson in again. Second TD of the day, his team up by three touchdowns. To maintain some balance. Up tempo here now. East Carolina down three touchdowns. Bazzi trying to get Carden throwing, falling forward the intended. Bazzi's played pretty well today, and he's an active player who has some speed. And, you, know, you wonder about whether or not when you look at him. Third and four from the nine. There's a play, and Roberts came in, knocked it away. Great job by Daryl Roberts. As he whacked the ball away, as Cam Worthy was the intended guy. Trying to run a slant on the backside. They clear it open. There's Delane, a pretty accurate throw, but you got Worthy trying to make himself worthy. And Roberts, through the reception area, stripped with the left hand. From the 10. Carden looking near side, checks off, now fires. Coming over to break that up. Terrific job. Coming in there was Monterius Lovett. At some point, these East Carolina receivers have got to get some separation. And, and you're not seeing that here. 
Lovett and Roberts have done the job, and they've been the difference. Redshirt senior out of Tallahassee. Second and ten, Carden. Dumps it off, it's intercepted! Taken in for the touchdown! Marshall's Gary Thompson, a pick six for ten yards! Thompson with the pick six. Well, you can see him right here, and he's going to come off. They're going to try to run a screen, but what they're doing is they're continuing to play different forms of man coverage, and he sets up the screen. He reads out of it, but their receivers have not been able to get off the line of scrimmage, and that's what allows these defensive ends to read plays like this because this is their answer to the man coverage. It's a screen game, and they've seen it too many times today. There's either been the shovel pass. Here it was the weak side screen. You got athletes like Marshall has in that defensive line. They all run well. But apparently they can catch too. East Carolina, another shovel pass. That's the third or fourth time they've done that in the game. It is not fooling that Marshall defense one bit. Right comes out of the out of the pile there, says Neville Hewitt says, not gonna get me this time. And he's been doing it on special team. This time he beats the block at number 78, Jordan Davis. He said, You can't block me. Inside of six minutes to go in the third. High snap, Carden pulled it down. He hands off Breon Allen. He's not going anywhere. So here goes Marshall back to work. Cato sidesteps a tackler, fires, caught Schuler. He tap danced his way. Maybe another yard or two down the sideline, but Tommy Schuler gets a first down gain of 13 as Woolard was there to force him up. Is <laughs> Marshall. They need 11. Pressure coming. They bring the heat. Cato steps up, fires over the middle. It's caught. Devin Johnson's got it. Can he get in for his third touchdown? You bet. Touchdown, Hurd. How about Devin Johnson? How about Cato finding him? And Johnson's run for two, and he's got that one. For the catch, 52 yards. Right? <laughs> well, he's a running back linebacker in high school. They rave over his contributions, and he just uncovered right there. He was actually being covered by number 35, and what he did was he worked away from that coverage, and that was Michael Dobson who lost him by Going back to Cato, he created it, and we talked about penmanship. What he can do is do it a number of different ways. And, and I tell you what, against Tulsa, so many times, he's scrambling around to create the throw. A lot of players scramble to run. He scrambles to throw. And Johnson has been Johnny on the spot. Carden changed the play. Second and 10. Gets away, but they got enough from behind to yank him down. Good effort in there. Steve Dillon got a piece. Carden, quick throw, caught Hardy. Can he get away? No, he can't. Great work over there. Corey Tindall made the tackle, wrapped him up and dropped him. Yeah, matched up one-on-one, -on -one. you've got to make space tackles against their best player. You come under control, and not only do you get him to the ground, you do it with... And they're both coming in scoring over 40 points a game. Marshall has done it in the last handful of games, and then some scoring points, and this is a big part of the reason. Thompson made the tackle, he got run over, but a huge gain picked up on that run of 21 by number 20, Stuart Butler. Well, when they spread you out and then you get a pretty good block on the outside, or really on the outside edges of that offensive. Quarter of a minute and counting left here in the third quarter. Cato's got all day. Now fires, Hoskins makes the catch, he's popped. He took a heavy shot, but he puts the right hand up and said, I got the ball, as Dietrich Allen smoked him, but Gator won the battle with a catch in the first down. This is the touch version, the 38 inch vertical. They talked about 38, oh. 39, and the length, those long arms. It's a first and 10 from the 14 for the herd. On the ground, this young man's been running well. Stewart Butler takes it in for the touchdown as the herd thunder their way in. A 14 yard run. 51 to 20. When your offensive line comes to play, 
and then you get those one-on-one -on -one matchups, your safeties have to be able to tackle. You saw him beat the tackle of Thompson in the open. Quarterback and defensive back. A direct snap to Cooper. He gave it up to Allen. That fools nobody. It's an underrated portion that's been just that, his ability to defend the run. East Carolina, seven for 16 on third down. Got to have this one. This one doesn't even get to the target. As it was batted down at the line, James Rouse getting a big paw on that one. One of the things that's come out of this game, as you'll see, in pushing Hudson back, that's one of the reasons why he was able to get his paws up to knock that ball down. They've given teams a formula against this East Carolina offense. Harden faking to Cooper. Now he's going to chuck one down the near side. Good job to get a hand on that. Back into coverage. Monterius Lovett got his hand on it. And they're winning the one-on-ones. All afternoon, look at the timing right there. You, you said it best, getting the hand on it. They were converting 53%. They're below that today. Carden down the seam, and it's deflected as it intercepted down to the turf. It was off the hands of Zico Pursuit, and it's intercepted by Taj Letman for Marshall. He's making a comeback pursuit this weekend. I think he's even surprised that went off his hands. Look at the low ball skills Oof. by Letman to get underneath it. That right arm underneath it. Six foot two. Here is Devin Johnson. Bounces off a would-be tackler. Look at this young man. Continues to impress. Dietrich Allen made the tackle, but he picked up nine. And it's a first stop. As these two teams came into this one playing for the East Division Championship in Conference USA, and it's all Marshall. They've got the football. Talaferro. He's going to be close to another first down. He'll pick up about eight. Change games. They do. Marshall giving way to Talaferro. Look at this young man run. Continues to impress. He's got a first down as he picks up. 11 on the run, Woolard made the stop. The herd just trying to chew up the time and work their way towards the end zone again. And this was the direction I thought he was the most effective in from his left to his right on the zone run. And you'll get a chance to see it here. Look at the patience setting up the block of number 74, Alex Schooler. Overrunning the pursuit that time was Terrell Stanley, number 66. And this here is fourth down now for Marshall. Cato. Fakes the throw, now fires, and it is caught. And it's going to be a first down for the Herd. Magazoo made the tackle on the fan favorite here in Huntington, Gator Hoskins. I, 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 you got to believe that they're going to find a way because these programs are so intertwined, exactly what Lisa was talking about, to resume, whether it's three, four, five years down the road. As we know in college football, the schedules are done a couple of years out, sometimes three years. So I hope personally, having had the pleasure and the honor to call these two games the last two years between these two, that they find a way to do that. And the 75 on the one side of the Marshall helmets, if you weren't with us earlier in the broadcast, for the 75 victims who died on that plane crash back on November 14th, 1970, upon returning from Greenville, North Carolina. And after the Tulsa game two weeks ago, they had those on there. The Tulsa team did a moment of silence at 6.36 Central Time, which was the exact time, Eastern Time, that the plane went down in Huntington. And, the, and Doc Holliday told us earlier in the week, he said, my players came to me and said, Coach, we want to leave the 75 on the helmets. A show of class, respect, and martial pride. Marshall leading 52-20, and they'll be the 2013 East Division Conference USA champs. They've got a shot to host that game next week right here in Huntington. Still to be determined what happens in the West. Here's Cato on the ground, takes it in. Rakeem Cato dances his way into the end zone for the exclamation point, a 12-yard run.
Alex Bazzi is a redshirt senior. Tommy Schuler is a junior, so he's going to have to deal with the coach a little bit more than <laughs> just the next couple games. And I tell you what, Coach Holiday, he's pretty serious. And he is. Look at this setup by. Well, there's another senior setting him up, Thomas. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, did they ever set it up? They got him twice. <laughs> oh, it's cold, but it probably has never felt better for Doc Holiday and the herd of Marshall as they're going to win this ball game 59 to 28. He's soaked, he's cold, but he could care less. The thundering herd of Marshall, the 2013 East Division champions of Conference USA. There's the respect, Corey. We talked about all three of us, you, myself, and Lisa, between those coaches. And one of the best things about it all is the fact that McNeil said good luck next week. Coach Holiday has to get his team to refocus now, come down off this high, and be able to get it kicked in gear for a championship game that's even more important than the one they just played. Exactly. So the herd flag flies proudly here in Huntington today as they take the ball game 59 to 28 over East Carolina. And the herd has won eight straight games now at home going back to last year. It was a very, very impressive win for Rakeem Cato, who's standing by with our Lisa Byington. Ben, thank you. You clinch the division. You get to the conference championship game, the biggest game in the last 11 years here. What does it mean to get to this point? It just it, it means more more to the fans and more to, uh, more to the community uh, than, than the game. Um, we laid our hearts on the line. Uh, we try, we, we're doing it for Huntington. We're doing it for Marshall. Uh, we, just, we just decided to be here. We just decided to be in this moment and, and decided to win this game. What has clipped for this team this year? What you say? What has clicked for this team this year? Just the will. Everybody have one mindset. Everybody want to win. That's no, no matter. Uh, it's not about the stats. It's not about my stats. It's not about what I'm doing. What the offense doing. Everybody just got one coming goal, and that's the win. Thank you for the time, Ben. Thank you, Lisa, and thanks to Rakeem Cato. Final thought from you, Corey Chavis. Impressed with him as a leader. I think the team has kind of taken on his combative nature. You saw him on the sidelines after he made plays, congratulating his teammates. Nobody was happier for the day of Devin Johnson than Cato, and that says a lot about the unity of this football team. Good stuff in the herd, showing their appreciation, as Rakeem Cato said. The folks here in Huntington, it's a tight-knit community. Doc Holliday told us earlier this month, no program means more to their fan base than this one right here in America because of what this program has gone through and how they've come back. And this year, they're the East Division champions in Conference USA as they finish with just one loss and a convincing win here in a winner-take-all game today against East Carolina as they win it 59-28. to 28.